we'll just I'll do a little introduction to what we're talking about and what we're doing. Um, Lauren and Ollie and have been working hard um, on. <laughs> they have. They've been working very hard um, on the badging project, which is about open badges in in academia essentially, but how we can use open badges to identify and reward and um, project skills that students have achieved outside of the curriculum, inside the curriculum, different places, um, and what they can do with those badges, which hopefully is a growing movement, well not hopefully, which is a growing movement out there in academia, um, spreading across the UK, the US, a lot of it in Australia. Um, and what we've done is we've we've brought together several projects across the university that are using badges in different ways. So we're trialing it in different spaces, in different ways. Um, we have our own account now, so we set up our own badges, um, which are DMNL branded, so that students will get the same kind of badges across the university, so there's a sense of organisation within, within the community of people using them. Um, we're using a system called Credly, which they will explain to you. Um, and we're going to link up with Mark, who's here, um, and his Open Badge Academy, which hopefully is going to bring together a lot more, um, a broader basis for badging, so that it's not just within Coventry, it's across the UK, and it's much more recognised, and, um, and will become a valid form of accreditation for students in the very near future. OK, is it working? Um, so we did have a presentation ready for you all, um, but for some reason it's not connecting up to the TV, so uh, we're just going to have to go old school and just talk to you, I'm afraid. Um, so have you all heard of digital badges, first of all? Mark, you're not allowed to answer. <laughs> Has anyone yeah. never heard the phrase? Yeah, so uh, as Jackie said, it's a form of digital accreditation, basically. So if you imagine your paper portfolio of your swimming certificates all the way through to your paper transcript of your degree. Uh, digital badging is essentially that, but a digital version. Uh, and it's got all the evidence attached. So within your badge, which is just a little icon, uh, you can see who's issued it, uh, when they issued it, what you needed to do to achieve that qualification, uh, and all the evidence that's attached to that. So it's a nice tidy little package for uh, accrediting someone in a whole range of different areas. So I guess one of the things, Lauren's just left me here, so. <laughs> one of the things that um, digital badging, that we're using it for, is soft skills accreditation. So for instance, students, when they finish university and they go out into the, the wider world, they have to start doing CVs. Um, one of the things that everyone always puts up on the CV is, oh, I'm, I'm good at communication, or oh, I'm good at team management. Or, but how do employers know that? So um, that's one of the ways that we're looking at using uh, the badging system. Sorry, getting distracted now. Um, there's, there's another example. I'll give you an example. from. I was at a conference last week where we were talking about, um, and actually I've got this example later on thinking about it. But um, in the transcript it will say, um, student did A406 MC computing, advanced computing, and they got a grade of 65. That doesn't actually say anything to anybody outside of this institution. Nobody knows what's in the curriculum for that module. Nobody knows whether a grade of 65 is on the high end, the middle end, the low end, maybe everybody got 90. It doesn't mean anything beyond that's a representation of what the student did while they were here. Um, with the open badges, you can see in detail what the student did in order to achieve, what the criteria were in order to achieve that badge, and you can link to the work that the student produced. So for example, we have um, a badge in the media department where they are working on after effects skills in Adobe. They have to do a 12-hour set of um, lectures and uh, talks on uh, lynda.com which is a training platform so they complete the training then they have to make something and then they will get the badge so only once they've gone through 
all the, the, the this is the badge. They get an After Effects advanced badge because they will be high level users of After Effects and will have high level skills. And that will say an awful lot more to an employer than I did a course in After Effects at the university or I've done mod the, the module in video production. And one of the things that we're exploring as well uh, with that is getting industry recognition. So for instance, you might have a particular uh, accreditation in automotive design, which might be recognized by Jaguar Land Rover, for instance. And getting those links um, is really the next important step um, that, that we're sort of aiming for. Because at the moment, students through uh, particularly primary school, moving into secondary and into college education, are using digital badges. So there's going to be a gap within three, four, five years time where they're coming through a system and all of a sudden it's, well, why aren't I getting these digital badges at university? Uh, so we want to sort of pre that and get ahead of that whilst we can. That's good. So um, one of the things we like you guys to do um, is we've got somewhere, where's it gone? Yeah. Uh -huh. Flip chart, going old school. Not, not very digital, I know, but, um, and some post-it notes and some pens. What we'd like to sort of get from you guys is, it's not going to stay up there, is it? What digital badges do you think you or your students um, might be interested in? So what, where can these qualifications go? Uh, what can we use them for? Uh, where might they be useful? And um, hopefully we can sort of work with you guys to actually build that into um, their curriculum in some way, shape or form. So, if I give you the glamorous job of... <laughs> so, um, what, what digital badges do you want? So, how will that... Uh, it, for instance, if you've got students in photography, they might want a digital badge in how to use Photoshop, for instance. Um, so, it's where these digital accreditations can come in, how they will help. Because one of the really uh, great things about badges is they can be shown on online CVs. So on LinkedIn profiles, for instance, you can put your digital badges on there as a means of qualification. I think uh, also what criteria. So how yeah how do you how would you measure what that they've achieved what they're trying to achieve? So if you want to be able to say that you, for example, Ollie is a photography graduate. So what skills does he have? We know he's graduated in photography. What cameras can he use? So if he had, if he had a set of open badges that said, this, this is the equipment that I am trained in, then any employer would know when he looked at um, Ollie's CV or his LinkedIn profile, he would say, okay, those are the skills I need and that's what he's got and he's, this is how he did it. And so it becomes very transparent what his skills are, not just that he studied, studied uh, photography. I'd like to think I can do more than just take photos. No, no that's <laughs> um, So yeah, if you have a think about that, um, we'll sort of pop those all together, we'll have a look through, um, and then we're going to run through how the system actually works, so you can sort of get flavour as to how, how easy it is um, if you were to use this to accredit students, um, how, how you can go about doing that. Yeah, as a sort of ad addition to that, we're also looking for, um, well, we're not looking for, but we're happy to take on more projects. So we've already got a number of people across the university who are trialling badges in their modules, in their, um, outside their modules. Um, if you, there's something that you'd like to develop, we're quite happy to work with you and help you develop that and bring it in within our project and issue you badges. Has anyone here used digital badges before? Interesting. Uh, sorry. Yeah, DML branded fans. So to give you an idea of sort of who's already using these phones, um, the big employers are already actually on board. So uh, the BBC, Cisco, um, World Wildlife Fund, uh, Adobe, they're all already using digital badges. 
uh, as a means of recognition for skills and also within their uh, recruitment process. So it's uh, becoming a very big thing. We hope to make it even bigger. on there. So project management. We've got innovation and creativity. Self certificates. What's to give me for something? That diplos anthropology like the part says. Ah. Okay. It's for the language. Yeah. Oh yeah. If you take language translate language then you go for your dance. Right, yeah. Brilliant. Um, I mean I know people who have sort of picked up the their language skills on CVs before, so yeah, um, ha having an accreditation there would certainly be useful. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, research skills, uh, presentation skills, report writing. So lots of different areas there that we can uh, sort of look at and uh, start working on uh, with your help. I think there's a whole area that in the library and more in there are soft skills that we are teaching and we have looked at this route before and wanted to provide an accredited route. But to go down a formal accredited route is, is, is quite difficult. But the digital, but the students want accreditation for the stuff they're doing. So this could work very well for some of those additional skills around, I think, because they do like a certificate or, or similar yeah. to have at the end. So I think it could work very well for the kind of things that we do as support services. Certainly, and also there's, there's different levels. So, yes. um, for instance, there's budget inbuilt into Moodle. Yes. Um, have, so yeah. you can use that within modules, but then when you want to take it external, you start looking at these sorts of platforms, and then you can build that up from there. Another university that had like a, a package for research, early careers research, and research stuff that was a Moodle, so it's a series of some compulsory modules and then optional modules, and that was they were moving on to badging that so that their research students could say, you know, if I'm going out to apply for a research post somewhere else, I have covered these things that are in the research framework. So I think it could be really good at that. I think it's just a, you know, in its simplest form, it's just a really easy way of having certificates. But with the evidence of, you know, I've got a cupboard full of certificates. Yeah, but they don't need it. Then it links to um, 
an extra, so you can link it anywhere. So you can get something like a, a Mozilla backpack, which you can take anywhere. It's a virtual record of achievement, if you like. It's a folder where you keep all your badges, so you can take it anywhere. Um, and Mark's company are developing, or ha I have already developed, um, an open platform for sharing badges. So at some point, hopefully, we'll, we'll work with him so we can have the, the Coventry badges will be on there so other people can use them and we can use other people's badges. So Mozilla, Mozilla have set up kind of an open standard, you know, like emails and open standard, so that you can, you can, well, you know, is, you can push that badge out to Mozilla, they'll hold it there, and then you can port it to whichever platform is, is kind of configured for that open system. So, so the badge, is always there, and it's the user is always in control of it. They can display it where, where they like. Um, and there's more and more people who are, uh, like, like Google and uh, LinkedIn and like that are, you know, are opening up to allow like, these badges to be displayed. Okay, for example, I'm a lifelong learner. I'm not related to any university, for example. So, yeah. can I apply for a budget, for example? Because I took French classes. I think I speak French, I have my doubt. And then, how can I present myself? Suppose that there is some project like Winston Churchill Travel Fellowship that I'm thinking I'm qualified to apply, but people will not know by my credential because it's not academic. Yeah. But can I apply? Oh, okay, I have this qualification. Can I have a test? And then you can give me a budget. So there are different ways in which you can issue badges. Uh, you can keep them locked down so that people can only um, access them if you send them an email, uh, for instance. Um, you can issue them with codes, so you can make a, a code publicly available so that anyone with that code could apply for that badge, um, submit the evidence. Um, or you can make them completely public. Um, so there are lots of different options there, depending on whether you want something locked down to a particular, for instance, if it's a module within the university, you want that locked down to that particular module. If it's something more general, uh, so one of the conversations we're having with Sarah Jones, the head of media, uh, um, is how we might be able to use digital badging as an entry method into the university. So for instance, uh, if we set a particular um, criteria of what you need to gain that badge, and then potentially that would lead to a guaranteed interview uh, for a place on particular courses. Um, and obviously that would be a very open badge. Um, but the ones within modules would be locked out. So there's a lot of um, scope there, depending how how you want to use it. So will I have freely, or is it? I mean, is it a free thing that you can do <laughs> online, or is it open for public? Like it has to be an awarding body. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what we're getting down to. You, yeah. You're saying, can I just apply to a yeah. badge for some, yeah. to yeah. someone for yeah. a badge? Yeah. But actually, the badge does have to be awarded by somebody. So it's not the case that you can just go to someone and say, I've got French, can you give me yeah, a badge? Because I'm thinking that you are doing another narrative here. Yeah. So, it, so that's what I was wondering whether you are going, because like when somebody comes in from a foreign country, they have to go to Narek to see whether their qualification is there. So is this the badge is the same thing? Or? It, it could be. So the, the example there, I think, that, that we're talking about, so Coventry might say, you know, um, you can attach evidence and effectively <laughs> create a badge. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm probably explaining on your part. But I think, you know, Coventry would uh, say, if you're applying here, you can attach evidence that, in effect, creates the badge, and then that gives you a guaranteed interview because we can see your evidence. But Coventry is still the awarding body. It's not the case that you create, yeah. you create your own badge. There has to be an awarding body, and I think yeah, that's... So a kind of narrative. Yes, so yeah. Meaning that still there's fee involved and then maybe we have to test yeah. it again? Yeah, or well, there might not be a fee, I guess. It would, obviously, if they're applying, they can fill out the digital badge and not yeah, I mean, a fee. Yeah, I mean, the general premise of the digital badge is it's free. Um, and obviously, if you're using certain platforms, you as a, an awarder okay. uh, might have to pay, uh, depending on the level of support that you, you require. Uh, but if you're, um, for instance, uh, our former members of the public um, yeah. applying for applying for you your badge then it wouldn't cost you. Um, but I think as far as I'm aware all of the platforms are free, although Mark might be able to answer that. Generally free for uh, the learner, learn, but not necessarily free for the issuer. I think the whole thing about um, you know, the, uh, the international side of it is really interesting because it is a really portable digital um, medium. 
And so uh, I know there's lots of people talking about um, doing badges that, that, that aren't locked to a location, that aren't international. Um, uh, it, yeah, it's, it's, not fairly, it, it's something that needs to happen, especially with everybody, so much movement around at the moment. I think it's kind of very, very permanent. But, um, it's, still, it's still early days in terms of those standards. And, and building value into badges is really, really important. So uh, an awarding body has that has that value already They're built up that reputation. Um, and, but but having said that, anybody can create a badge and issue a badge. You don't need to be the one who's good at it. It all um, comes down to who's awarding it. And as with any qualification, it's the reputation of the people awarding it that it comes down to. Um, so there's, there's obviously, obviously a huge difference between a uh, level one swimming certificate yes. and a degree. So it's, it's that same sort of uh, difference that we need to build into the system as well. And that's through the evidence, through the criteria, through the design and through the issuer. Um, those things will be built up. But for example, if somebody from outside Copenhagen University, do they have to be stuck? to be tested again because to standardize as a badge from Coventry University. Well, again, that's another open area. You, you can set badges so they never expire, or you can do it so that they expire after a year, two years, however long it is. Um, so if you know you've got something, for instance, if it's a particular piece of software, uh, so as a photographer, I'll use Photoshop as an example, that obviously develops over time. Um, so two years down the line, what you may, may have learned so it's is obsolete, so you, you might set a two year time limit on, on that badge um, and then move on and develop as time goes on. Uh, so you've got a lot of flexibility there as well. I think that's the key thing about badging is the flexibility, not just as an issuer but also as an earner. Where do you want to put it? How do you want to share it? Um, who do you want to show it to? Um, what badges do you want to apply for or, or earn? Um, so I think that, that's the the big, big selling point. Really. And I, I think there's still a lot of questions. I mean, like some of the, the issues you've raised are things that just haven't been dealt, been addressed yet. That it, it's early days, and so those are things that we need to look at. at how open it's going to be. I mean, they, they're called open badges, so the idea is that anyone can do them at any time. But then, how do you verify that they've been used? And I think if we build momentum. And as they become more standardised <laughs> across all areas, not just in academia, then I think it will become easier to get your, you know, your yeah. French qualifications okay. or your language skills yeah. recognised and accepted, and carry those badges with you. Well, we've um, we've pretty much filled our time, um, but Mark will be around most of the day, um, and us, myself, Jackie, yeah. and Bolly. Uh, we'll be floating around, so if you, if you do have any... And we're an Ignite at 2.15. Yeah, so we'll so be we'll talking about... another what, very quick talk. Okay. Um, and that'll be about what we're doing in the lab. So, um, yeah, just come along, find us, and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll start working with you guys to get some badges on the wall. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so thanks very much, Ollie and Jackie and Lauren. Um,